quick, it's break time. So. Um, again, my name's Tom Brooks. I oversee the breeding program for America. We were excited to be here this morning primarily to support what Bob does and the association that Ruth's overseeing that brought all this together. Um, we have a, I'm not going to really give a talk this morning about data other than to tell you a little bit about uh, what we see as value here for us because we have to, my job is to try to find varieties that will work in your territory, in your scenario if you're a grower. And I can, can't over can't overemphasize the importance of Bob's work and Jim's and Wayne's, the guys that are doing all these research plots. You've, you've seen a good taste of how much work goes into that as the, a lot of these slides that Tim and Ken have shown that you can generate from this data. Um, on, on Bob's uh, farm, and trust me, I really would rather be out there too today. Uh, I'm also visual. I'd rather y'all be looking at my cotton than at me right now. <laughs> so uh, bear with me. But on his farm, I'm primarily running uh, most years a single uh, water regime to look at my test at my research plots, primarily the 60% ET or a little less, depending on how much water we're getting. But I trust Bob to do that, uh, primarily because America is a small private company. We're based out of uh, West Texas and Gaines County, and very lean. So I, I trust, I have to rely on other expertise for a lot of my work, and one of those people is Bob, as you can see, he does a lot of a good work up there. So I primarily run about a 60%, 50% ET on my trials. It allows me to look at, instead of like a seven entry test, maybe 30 or 40 entry tests. So I can screen a lot more, maybe a little rougher germplasm, a little further back in the breeding program. Uh, at a time than if I do multiple regimes and then maybe come back in, in, in interval years and look at uh, multiple regimes to see some of the, more of the data like uh, we've seen this morning. Um, let's see. So, so from a plant breeder's point of view, one of the primary things that value that Bob's work and sending to regime watering brings me is I, I don't like surprises. I can't afford surprises on a variety. And so if I can find the, find varieties that are consistently performing in that sweet spot, which is primarily probably 60% ET up you know, at least north of Lubbock, and probably further down, it's, it's changing every year, going lower. Uh, fewer surprises I have, the more stability we have, the better that is for us as a company, but also obviously because that's better than you as a grower. That's one of the big values I get from, from working in this regime. I did want to emphasize again that the importance of, of the public researchers that have been mentioned this morning, Jim and Wayne, Glenn Ritchie at uh, Tech as well. They allow us to put a foothold down and get good data on this when we don't have the ability to do that in-house. So there's expertise both private, like with Bob, as well as public, and I think that's very important and very valuable for, for everyone involved. So with that, I think uh, I'm going to hand it over to Gary, and he's going to talk about some of our varieties that we have. Thanks, Tom. I don't know if I really need that microphone. I'll speak up, but I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Really uh, thank uh, uh, the TAWC on the work they do, and Rick. I think it's information that we all desperately need, and the work that Bob does up there on his farm. Uh, we really rely on that a lot to give us better information about our products. I'm definitely going to probably catch us up on our time because I'm going to be very short. I just want to talk to you a little bit today about uh, some of our varieties that we've introduced in the last year and uh, that we're going to be a major part of our foundation and the products that we're going to be selling in the next couple of years. 
Our 3406 was introduced last year, so this is its second year in production. It's an early mid variety that, as you can see, is part of the Bogart II Extend Flex system. Uh, we're learning a lot about that, even more so this year, with some of the um, early season heat and stress that we saw in the, in the months of June and July before it started raining. Uh, we've seen that 3406 has a wide adaptation and it has a lot of heat stress tolerance. And for West Texas, on a dry land situation or even under a limited water situation, uh, this is very important. What did we see in, in 2015 as far as recaps? We don't, we don't have a lot of individual tests out there. What we like to do is look at the big fields, the farmer's fields, how did our products work in those situations. Under an irrigated situation in 2015, we recapped uh, 6,200 acres of irrigated cotton in just in West Texas. Its average yields of this was from low water regimes to high water regimes, drip, uh, pivot irrigation. But we saw 3406 all across from basically um, the San Angelo area all the way up to uh, north of Amarillo. Its average yield was about in that uh, excuse, uh, 1,376 pounds. Uh, it had good staple there, right out of 36, good premium micron air. But also under the dry land situation, about 30, almost 3,500 acres of dry land just in West Texas. It averaged right at that bale and a half, and that was uh, extremely dry situations to a little bit more in the rainfall situation where we did catch some rain. As a lot of guys have said, they're very visual, so we're not, we're not going to be able to see the cotton plant, but we're going to show you some pictures of what this did under different uh, irrigation regimes last year in Hockley County. I'm hitting the wrong button. In Hockley County on a drip field that had two gallons of there uh, per minute, hit that 1,200 uh, pounds, right, almost right at a two and a half bale yield. It had a 56 cent loan situation. So that was very limited water. Uh, it did catch a little bit of rainfall uh, later in the, in the year. Another Hockley County field, a little bit higher uh, irrigation potential at right at three and a half gallons per minute, but hit that 1,700 pounds and had a really good uh, uh, loan and staple. So that's another good uh, indication of how it can do under a little bit better water situation. Uh, in a Lubbock County drip field, uh, I'm not sure exactly how much this uh, the water regime was or what the level was in uh, the Lubbock County, but right at three bales, but it would have been probably somewhere between the three and four uh, gallon per minute regime. But again, uh, a good water use efficiency we're seeing with the 3406. And then under a limited water situation, again in uh, Lubbock, exactly dry land, but uh, right at a 2.37 bales per acre, and this is per land acre yield and right at a 55 cent loan. So you're seeing there a better um, yield and well maintaining a good quality loan uh, and lift quality. Uh, another variety that we have uh, that is due this year is 3500. It's an X10 flex only with no Bogard. It is another early and medium variety. And we only had it in our uh, seed production situation. So. Uh, the pictures are going to be in Gaines or Lee County and uh, some pretty uh, severe uh, heat situations, what, you're saying, what you saw there in 2015. We only had about 440 acres uh, of irrigated and it's under different regimes, different amounts of water, but this particular variety showed us that it had a really good uh, irrigation or yield potential. Uh, under those different regimes, it had uh, 1,622 pounds, uh, maintained its uh, good staple, mic, and strength. 
a couple of fields that we saw. Uh, this was a pivot that had 1.6 gallons per minute. And you can see there that they've gone to the skip road just to be able to widen their, uh, their uh, drag hoses out there. It averaged 2.84 bales, and this is, uh, that was per, uh, uh, per row acre, but again, at 55 cent long, so very little water, but it still uh, had a good yield potential and yieldability. Another one, this was another light water pivot. I'm not sure what the uh, exact gallons per minute is, but uh, per row acre, 3.86 bales in a very good uh, lint package of 56 and 3 quarter cents. Another uh, field, and this was in Lee County, uh, and it is skip road, two in, one out, but uh, Again, showing us the yield potential for the 3,500 uh, per row acre, it did go five, nearly 5.37 bales. And again, that uh, good lit package at 56.24 was the loan product, uh, loan price there. So what we're seeing with 3,500, it does have a lot of ability, and we have it on a lot of dry land this year, so we're gonna get uh, a lot more information there. It's sisters, the 3,517, it is the B-tooth uh, trait uh, of the uh, extend flex of the 3500 without the uh, B-2. Again, it's an early medium. What we saw with that last year uh, on 358 acres of production under uh, irrigation, 1,400 pounds. But again, the, the uh, superior uh, staple and strength that it had there. It also under some different uh, regimes this was a, a good pivot that had pretty good water. We took the picture actually a little bit before uh, it was actually ready, and then it occurred a, a hail in October after this picture. And so the yield was a little bit uh, hit there. The yield is after the, the, uh, the hail. It finished up at about 1,100 pounds and 2.3 bales per the acre and a 55 cent loan. Uh, if we hadn't incurred that hail, I think that we definitely lost uh, three quarters to even a bale of uh, yield there. Another Gaines County light water pivot. <coughs> now this is uh, again on a per row acre basis, uh, two and three quarters bales. So we feel like this particular variety along with the 3500 certainly has the opportunity and the yield ability to uh, survive and do a good job under those uh, low water regimes. The 4545 is uh, another uh, variety in this family. It is a, a medium variety. It's going to have much more of an indeterminate uh, growth habit. <coughs> uh, but what we saw on this one, about 452 acres, uh, under a little bit less water regime, but about two and a half bales. But again, it maintained its high staple and strength quality uh, under a low water pivot. And this was actually in the same pivot as the 3517 that occurred the, uh, that incurred the hail there in October. But two and a, two and a half bales, uh, again, it's good uh, fiber quality. Uh, and then this uh, a low water pivot, excuse me, need some water. Uh, but anyway, right at that 2.83 bales. And 56 cents, and it was on a per row acre uh, basis, too. So, these are the products that we're looking at. I know that we've got probably four more of these uh, Extend Flex varieties, new ones for next year in 2017. Uh, we are definitely <coughs> working to, uh, <coughs> working to uh, get our products going there in that. You noticed that, but I just wanted to skip over it real fast. Yeah, but that was the end. Yeah. We really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here today. Thanks a lot uh, for your attention, and thanks a lot for uh, working with us and, and, and working with Bob and the uh, Extension Service on those uh, on this regime. Appreciate it.